Hernandez back to pass. Two seconds, one second. Unitas throwing to Richardson. He has the ball in the 49. Brought down by Sample. The clock has run out. And the ball game is over. There is the gun. And the Jets are champions of the football world. What a year. What a fantastic year 1968 was. The year of the Jets. The year the super cool Joe Namath fired up his upstart Jets into a resounding Super Bowl win over the mighty Baltimore Colts. They said it couldn't be done. They said the Jets and the AFL were years away from victory over the NFL. But Coach Weeb Eubank kept his mighty men of Shea too busy playing football to hear what people said. All season long, there was one goal. Room for only one thought. Win the Super Bowl. But from the very start, the opening game against Kansas City, it was obvious that no victory would come easy. The Jets scored first. Namath back to throw, dropping way back and looking and throwing long for Maynard. He's out there at the 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown! He got behind Goldie Sellers by a step, and Joe Namath went for the bomb on second down and inches. A bit of a surprise element, possibly. Sam Walton doing great pass blocking for Namath as he dropped back deep. And the Jets go for the bomb and make it 55 yards for the touchdown. A Jim Turner field goal put the Jets ahead 10 to 3 late in the second quarter. Now it is second down and 10 on the Kansas City 30 with a minute 55 left to play in the first half. The score of the New York Jets 10 on the Kansas City Chiefs 3. Namath calls it for New York and drops back to pass. He is looking, throwing far for Maynard at the 5. He's got it. He's in. Touchdown. With the Jets up only 17 to 16 in the fourth quarter, Jim Turner again took aim. The field goal attempt from the 42 by Jim Turner with Babe Perilli holding. Jets leading 17 to 16. We're in the fourth quarter. Here's the snap. The ball is down. The kick is on the way. And it is good. A 42-yard field goal by Jim Turner. And the Jets go in front now by a score of 20 to 16. But a Chiefs field goal made it 20 to 19. And with five minutes and 50 seconds remaining, Joe Namath engineered a game-winning masterpiece of ball control, highlighted by this key third down play. Crowd trying to spur that defense on now with third down, 11 on the New York four. Sauer wide to the left, Maynard wide to the right. Namath back of the end zone to throw. Throw, slant in to Maynard at the 15. Don spinning, going to the 20. Brought down to the 20-yard line, and the Jets get out of the hole. Namath and the Jets proved they could make the big third down play and could also control the ball, which they did for the rest of this game. And now to Emerson Boozer, who's standing next to me. Don't look too bad, Emerson. You look in real good shape. Well, I feel pretty good right now. Uh, there's nothing better to come back to the scene of the disaster and have a great win as we had today. I'm a little exhausted, but only happy about the win out here in Kansas City. Were you a little apprehensive about coming back to Kansas City, playing on the same field where you were injured last year? Yes, I was, Sam. I have very much reservations about playing here, but as it turned out, we did our job and we did it well. We have something this year that, that we didn't have, and that's defensive togetherness. I think the defensive unit played real fine today. They held Kansas City to no rushing touchdown, and that means a lot to stop that Kansas City offense. Kansas City offense. Emerson, thanks a lot. Good luck the rest of the year. Hot off their victory over the Chiefs, the Jets next walloped the Boston Patriots 47-31 in Birmingham, Alabama. Jim Turner's four field goals tied a club record, and Randy Beverly romped 68 yards to pay dirt with an interception. In Buffalo the next week, it was a different story, as the upset-minded Bills outgunned the Jets in a wide-open 37-35 scoring jamboree. On October 5th, 63,768, the largest crowd ever to see an AFL game was on hand at Shea Stadium to witness a real cliffhanger with the San Diego Chargers. While the Jet defense held San Diego to 28 yards on the ground, this play helped the Jets draw first blood. Hadel back to pass, third and 19, Hadel throwing for Garrison, intercepted by Four plays later, Jim Turner notched a 26-yard field goal. Jets three, Chargers nothing. In the second quarter, it was Turner's turn again. And once again, Turner for a field goal attempt. This one from 45 yards out. Again, a slide angle to the right. So here's the snap, the ball down, the kick is on the way. And it is good! Turner gets a 45-yarder. 
and again in the second quarter. Chargers lead 7-6. to six. The field goal unit comes on. Here's the snap. The ball is down. The kick is up. It is good. An 11-yard field goal puts the Jets into the lead with 16 seconds remaining on the clock. In the first half, the score is New York 9 and San Diego 7. At the end of a classic 12-play 56-yard march, Matt Snell's three-yard burst put the Jets ahead 16-7 in the third quarter. Then, with San Diego surging ahead in the fourth period, the Jets launched a 75-yard drive with five minutes left in the game. Listen to some of the big plays. Second down, seven yards to go. Namath dropping back in a hurry to throw and stays in the pocket. He throws to the far side. Great catch by Maynard on the 45-yard line. Bob Howard brought him down immediately. Don Maynard with a sliding catch and a first down for New York on the Jet 45. Namath calls it. Joe drops back to throw. He throws up the middle. Caught by Mark Smolinski down on the 41-yard line of San Diego. A great leaping catch. First and 10 on the Charger, 25. Namath goes back to pass. The Charger forward wall. Here's a throw to Smolinski at the 10. He's down to the 6. Mark Smolinski on a slant in. Stopped by Staggs and Tolbert. And the clock showing 3.05 and running first and goal to go in the Chargers, six. Minute 47 to go. The Jets come out of the huddle. Lamons a tight end, sets on the left side. Namath calls it, the crowd standing, fourth and one at the goal line. Here's a handoff, a dive, and a touchdown! Boozer made it! Emerson Boozer over the top for a touchdown! A handoff to Emerson Boozer. Up over the top he went. And it's a happy band of Jets. They made it the hard way. Fourth down and goal to go at the one. And Boozer went right up over the top. He banged into Kenny Graham. And Graham couldn't hold him off. Jim Turner for the extra point try. Perilli is holding. The kick is on the way. It is good. The kick is good. And with a minute 43 seconds left in the ball game, the Jets are now in front by a score of 23 to 20. But with time running out, it looked as if San Diego was heading for Pater and a big win until... Hadel back to pass, getting the protection, now being rushed, now throwing long for Dyer. It is intercepted by Sample. Sample at the 5, up to the 10, up to the 20, running easily, killing the clock to the 30, to the 35, and it's finally out of bounds on the 47-yard line. And now to Johnny Sample, sitting beside me in the Jed locker room, cradling the game ball. The game ball was just presented to Johnny by Joe Namath in the locker room before he came out here to talk to us. John, congratulations on a fine game and a fine win for the Jets. Well, Sam, it was a big game for us after giving the game away to Buffalo last week. We had to come back and win this one. It was a difficult game. San Diego has a great ball club, and we were fortunate enough to win, and we have to thank God Almighty, I think, to come out on top of this game. John, I didn't see the interception at the end of the game. We were on our way down here to the locker room. Tell us what happened. Well, Sam, uh, we had a, a double call, which is a five call for us. My man ran a smash where he comes down about two steps and goes in. I released him and fell back on the, which was the tight end coming out. And I was fortunate enough to see the ball and I caught it. And I tell you, I made a lot of plays in the revenue years of professional football, but this is one of the biggest ones I've ever made. Thank you, John. Thank you, Sam. It's a pleasure being here with you. The Jets absorbed their second loss the following week when Denver turned them aside in a 21-13 upset. In a must game against Houston the next week, the Jets again made it a hair raiser. The Jets opened the scoring when... Norton kicking from deep in the end zone. It's blocked by the Jets out of the end zone. And a safety for New York. The Jets blocked the kick. It went out of the end zone. Could not be covered. I'm not sure if it was Dave Herman who did it or not. It appeared to be Herman as he threw those hands up. And the safety gives the Jets two points. And now Houston will have a free kick from the 20. On their first scoring drive, the Jets pulled a few surprises. Namath backpedaling, looking, throwing, for Sauer, caught on the five, he is down to the one. Second and an inch. Namath calling signals. Namath quarterback sneak dives in, touchdown. Jim Turner for the extra point try, Babe Farrelly is holding. Here's the snap, and they fake it. Perilli throwing for two points. They got it. Bill Mathis. Bill Mathis taking the pass in the end zone as the Jets go for two and make it. So the Jets.
Jets now move out in front by a score of 10 to nothing with a minute 17 seconds left to play in the first half. With four minutes to play and now trailing 14 to 13, the Jets were 80 yards away from a score. Could they do it? Listen to this finish. Namath on a handoff to Boozer, coming back to the left side. He goes down to the 20, down to the 15, down to the 10-yard line. He goes to the 9-yard line. Boozer off tackle on the left side, brought down by W.K. Hicks. Bob Talamini and Winston Hill. Doing a lot of blocking on that left side as Boozer went to the 9, and the clock shows a minute 35 and is running. Out of the huddle come the Jets. The ball just inside the 10. First down and goal to go. Namath calling signals for New York. Flankers left and right. Namath barks a play. Joe gives off to Snell. Snell at the five. Snell inside the five to the two-yard line. W.K. Hicks and Houston stop the play. One minute left in this ball game now. Bell takes it into the end zone. Touchdown off his own left tackle. Matt Snell scores behind Hill and Tallarini. And the Jets go back in front on a long drive that took about two minutes that carried them 80 yards and back into the lead. With less than a minute to play, Jerry Philbin put the icing on the cake. Zeke Moore and Larry Carwell are deep for Houston. Here comes Curly Johnson. Downfield comes a football. High end over end. It's going to be taken by Moore on the 5. To the 10, to the 15, to the 20. He fumbles as he is hit, and the Jets recover on the 27. Jerry Philbin hit Zeke Moore and really whacked him. And shook that ball loose from Zeke Moore, and the Jets recover. Al Atkinson, I believe, fell on the ball. I have never seen a harder whack than Philbin gave Moore right in the bread basket on a shoulder tackle, and the ball went flying right on up the field where it was covered on the 27-yard line by Al Atkinson. The Jets are letting the clock run with 26 seconds remaining. Before I uh, give you the summary of the scoring of today's game, George Sauer is still with us. George Sauer Sr., that is. And... Uh, George, uh, I'm not going to ask you uh, uh, any direct question. All I'm going to ask you is, what are you thinking about right now? It was a great victory. I felt, though, that both teams uh, would loosen up in the second half. In fact, they had to because it, uh, uh, neither one was going to do much in the way of uh, winning the ball game by playing the way they did in the first half. They loosened up. They ran more wide plays. They uh, kept on double-teaming the wide receivers, but they uh, sent the... Uh, uh, halfbacks and fullback on close players up the middle and spread out the defense and it was just bound to turn into a much better game. I think the Jets played a uh, remarkable ball in the second half. They uh, they were on their toes mentally and physically. Joe Namath did a wonderful job of calling plays and just a masterful job of uh, hitting his receivers. Have you ever seen a better drive than that last one? No, oh, sir. No, very, very few like that, I tell you. Thank you so much, George Sauer Sr. The Jets wasted no time in their next game as they put it to the Patriots 48-14 at Shea Stadium. The Jets' defense was again phenomenal as it held the Patriot runners to a mere 44 yards. Billy Joe scored three and Babe Perilli got into the act with a two-yard tally of his own. A record six Jim Turner field goals and a Johnny Sample interception and 36-yard touchdown jaunt gave the Jets another come-from-behind, everybody-standing 25-21 win over their early season captors, the Buffalo Bills. Cold wind and rain proved good weather for the high-flying Jets as they drill the Oilers next time out. Wide to the right, way out to the right is Emerson Boozer. Wide to the left is Lamons, and back to pass goes Namath. Namath throwing up the middle for Maynard. He's got the ball on the 48-yard line of Houston, and he has stopped there. Namath back to pass for the third time in a row. He throws for Sauer. There he is on the 20 to the 15, the 10, the 5. And he has knocked down the five-yard line by W.K. Hicks. Joe Namath going to the air in the slippery rain of this afternoon, completing one for 43 yards. He had a 19-yarder a moment ago. First and goal on the Houston 5. Namath on a handoff to Mathis. Mathis bangs to the right side. Touchdown. Third down and seven. Here's Namath going back to pass and looking and throwing for Mathis. He's in the open at the 10. He falls down at the 8 as he catches the ball and is down on the 6-yard line. Third down and goal to go, the 1-yard line. Jets are leading 16-7. to seven. Mathis and Snell in the backfield. 
calling signals. Joe Namath, he hands off to Mathis. Mathis dives for the goal line. He is in. Touchdown. Jim Turner added his fourth field goal of the afternoon. And the final score, the Jets 26, Houston 7. Joe Namath, congratulations on a fine game. Thank you, Sam. I think it was one of our best team victories of the year, and it was probably the most important so far. Joe, let me ask you a few questions about the game. First of all, Boozer out there on the flank. What was the uh, thinking behind that? In the beginning of the game, you ran it more often than later on, but with Boozer out and also the wide receiver in the slot. Well, number one, we knew it would cause confusion Confusion with uh, Houston secondary. They immediately went to a man-for-man -man coverage and left George Sire and Don Maynard one-on-one, -on -one, and they had the whole middle of the field to work with. And then we went in, uh, and completed a couple passes to George and Don, which, uh, well, helped us score the first touchdown. That was a big play. How would you evaluate your performance today? Uh, well, we won the ball game, so I would evaluate my performance along with everyone else's as excellent. Anytime we win a ball game, that's the only way to evaluate it. Thank you very much, Joe. Oh, thank you very much. With 50 seconds to go in the Wild and Woolly Raiders game in Oakland, the program Heidi preempted the end of the game on TV. And in just nine seconds, two Oakland scores preempted the Jets from clinching the Eastern Division title. Here are some of the highlights. It is third down and nine on the 29-yard line. Back to pass is Namath, fading way back, throwing for the goal line for Lamons. He's got the ball at the eight. He's down to the five. He is knocked down on the four. It is first and goal to go on the Raider four. Namath hands off to Mathis, coming back to the left side behind Herman. Swinging wide at the five, the three, touchdown. Bill Mathis running behind the fine block of Dave Herman. And Mathis goes in to put the Jets in the lead by a score of 18 to 14. Third and goal. The running backs are split. LaMonica calls the play. Gives up to Charlie Smith. Smith tripped up behind the line. Fumbles the ball. The Jets cover it. The Jets recover the ball at the three-yard line. The tackler on the play, and let me get his number, was Paul Crane, and he is hobbling off the field. He turned Smith upside down, and Philbin fell on the loose football, and the Jets take it on the three. Namath back to pass, flag down, Namath in the end zone, throwing long for Don Maynard, it is caught by Maynard on the 40, he's up near the midfield stripe and out of bounds on the 49 yard line or right on the midfield stripe. First and 10 on the midfield stripe for the yard, Namath goes back to pass, Joe Willie looking, throwing long down the sideline for Maynard, there he is, he's up to 15, the 10, he falls down, he gets up, 5, he's in, touchdown. Maynard fell down, Atkinson who was covering him fell down. And then Don got up and ran on into the end zone. So in two pass plays of 47 and 50 yards, both to Don Maynard, the Jets are back in front again. It's 25 to 22 from the 26. Perilli to hold. There's the snap. The ball is down. The kick is on the way. It is good. Jim Turner with a 26-yard field goal puts the Jets in front now. And here comes Heidi. 50 seconds remaining. LaMonica goes back to throw. LaMonica looking, LaMonica throwing. He's got Charlie Smith on the 20. Down to the 15, the 10, 5, touchdown! Mike Eyshide to kick off. And downfield comes the football. He boots it on the ground. It's going to be fielded by Christie at the 10. He bounces it, he goes back to pick it up on the 12. Christie is shaken, fumbles the ball. It is recovered by Oakland for a touchdown. The ball bounced into the end zone and was recovered. It was recovered by Preston Riddle Huber for a touchdown. Now listen to this crowd. Seconds left, and Oakland has scored two touchdowns in nine seconds. Blanda for the extra point. It's good. 43 seconds left to score. Oakland 43, New York 32. An unbelievable finish. Standing beside me is Bill Mathis, who scored a couple of touchdowns today. Bill. What about this game? What was the deciding factor? Sam, this is really a sickening defeat for all of us. We felt like that we played well enough to win, and penalties hurt us. And uh, I haven't had time to stop and think about what was a deciding factor. I guess them getting more points than we did. 
Uh, we're just all heartbroken now. I thought that Joe Namath threw well. I thought that perhaps the pass protection, as we mentioned in the first half, created some problems. But overall, I thought he had an outstanding day, and when the pass protection improved, uh, so did Joe Namath. He certainly did. In the first half, we didn't block as well as we should, but the second half, we made some, adjust we made some adjustments at halftime and came back out in the second half, and I think we gave him a pretty good job with uh, our pass protection. Bill, thank you very much. I know it's a very disappointing loss for the Jets. The Jets played one of their finest games ever against the San Diego Chargers. Now, Jim Turner has kicked 28 field goals this year, which ties the all-time all-pro record. 13-yard field goal attempt by Turner. The snap for really holding. The kick is on the way. It is good. This is a must-must game for San Diego and certainly is just as important to the Jets. Although the Jets, uh, with a record of 7-3, and three, are well in front of the Eastern Division. Houston, riding with a record of 5-6, and six, will play Kansas City on Thanksgiving afternoon. Namath fakes the draw, drops back to pass. He throws long for Maynard down the far side. Don's got the ball at midfield. He's down to the 40, down to the 30, into the clear at the 20, the 15, the 10, the 5. Touchdown! Don Maynard. He shook Bob Howard, the only defender who was out there, and Maynard was in the clear of the last 45 yards. First and goal at the three. Snell on the handoff. Snell going wide. Touchdown. He cut for the left tackle hole and then went for the outside with Bill Mathis blocking in and Bob Talamini leading the play. And the Jets score from the three and now go ahead by a score of 10. I beg your pardon, by a score of 16 to nothing. First and 10 of the 19. Namath back to throw on a first down. Joe looking, Joe throwing for the end zone. Mathis wide open, touchdown. It was a spectacular show of offense as the Jets rolled to a 37 to 15 win. But the relentless Jet defense was equally impressive. Listen to the tough time they gave Charger quarterback John Hadle. Here's a slot left, Hadle back to pass, looking long, throwing long for Allworth. He's out there, but it's intercepted. It is intercepted by Billy Baird. Back on the 80, comes up to the 10 to the 15 to the 20 and runs out of bounds on the 29 yard line. Lance Allworth running a post pattern as Hadel going for the bomb on a great call, I thought, Sam. Trying to hit the Jets after that big kickoff return, but Billy Beard picked it off and brought it back to the 29-yard line. Second and 10 on the Charger 10-yard line. Berlin Biggs in at right end. The tackles are John Elliott and Paul Rochester, and the defensive left end is Jerry Philbin. Hadel dropping back near the end zone to throw. Hadel throwing back up the middle, and it's intercepted off the hands of Allworth by Randy Beverly at the 27. Down to the 20. He cuts, still on his feet at the 20, tries to go wide. Garrison has him. Now he spins off Garrison, and Allworth brings him down to the 21-yard line. Hadel calls it. Hadel drops back. Hadel looks into the end zone. He throws, knocked down by Big Bad John Elliott. Big Bad John got his hands in the ball to knock it down, and the Jets take over at the nine-yard line. Hadel back to pass on a first down. In the pocket, now he runs out of the pocket. He is being chased. He throws in the run. It's intercepted by Gordon on the 39. Gordon at the 40, cuts back to the 39, and down he goes. Garrison made the tackle. Hadel throwing on the run, and that is the fourth interception this afternoon. It was a day of total frustration for Hadel as the Jets' pass rush kept him running for his life. And with this victory, the Jets clinched at least a tie for their division title. And when Kansas City beat Houston Thanksgiving Day, the Jets were kings of the Eastern Division. But the Jets weren't content to rest on their laurels. They saddled the Miami Dolphins with a 35-17 loss as Don Maynard, that West Texas Cowboy, had quite a day. Namath going back to pass in the pocket. He is throwing to the far side for Maynard. Down to the 35, down to the 30, down to the 25, the 20, the 15, the 10, the 5. Touchdown! Jimmy Warren came up on Maynard on the 35. Maynard took the pass. Warren grabbed for him. Maynard gave him a stiff arm and went 54 yards on the pass and run for a touchdown. Wide to the right, Maynard to the left to Sauer. And back to pass is Pirelli. Pirelli throwing long for Maynard. He's wide open. He's going if he catches the ball, and he does. Don Maynard. And the Jets go back in front, 20 to 17. Don Maynard has just set a career record of 9,275 yards pass catching. That's a pro football career record. And I don't think Weeb cares if he wears sideburns or not. <laughs> Wide to the right is Maynard to the left is Sauer. It is third down and 10 on the 25. Perilli to pass. Perilli in the pocket. Throwing for Maynard. He's out there. Touchdown! This 
time he beat Jimmy Warren. A standing ovation for Don Maynard, who caught a 47-yard bomb a moment ago. He has just hauled one in for 25 yards. Dave Herman gives him congratulations, and the Jets now lead 27-17. Don Maynard, what happened today? There was one touchdown, I think the last one you caught, where you were all alone. I think it was um, Warren was covering you, and you broke away. You were 20 yards clear of him when you caught the ball. What happened on that one? Well, I just like to say I put a good fake on him, but I really don't know. I had to see it in the film. They might have had a coverage. He might have been busted, but I'm not sure. Well, that was my first reaction, that you had really twisted and turned him every It was down to the wire now, and some people were saying it was the year of the Jet. Some said that the name of the game was Namath. Others simply said the Jets had finally gelled. But now that they'd captured the East Division title, where would they go from here? How would they fare against a tough Oakland team that had knocked them off in the closing seconds of the famous Heidi game? If they got by them, how would they do in the Super Bowl, where the NFL had clearly asserted its superiority over its two previous AFL opponents? Well, first things first. First, the Jets had to play Oakland. And like all New York-Oakland games, it was a humdinger. Here we are, early in the first quarter. The Jets with the ball on the Raiders 44. Snell and Boozer in the backfield, and the Jets come out with a wide spread and a slant in pass goes to Maynard on the 30-yard line, and he is down immediately by George Atkinson. A penalty against Oakland then moved the ball to the Raider 20. First and ten for the Jets, two straight first downs for New York. Here's a handoff to Matt Snell. He bombs his way through the middle of the 15 down to the 14-yard line. And then the Jets struck. Namath back to pass on second down. Throws for the end zone. Touchdown for Maynard. Turner for the extra point. It is good. The score, Jets 7, Oakland nothing. The Jets were fired up, and the defense was determined to have its say as well. Then the handoff goes to Charlie Smith, trying the power sweep right. The blocking doesn't materialize. He is thrown back on the 18-yard line by Al Atkinson, the middle linebacker. Back to throw goes Darrell LaMonica, backpedaling, throwing back up the middle, incomplete for Billy Ken and the tight end, and almost intercepted by Al Atkinson. The Jet defense forced the Raiders to kick, and now the Jets' hard-running backs move the ball into field goal range. First down and 10 of the New York 44. Namath fakes to Snell, gives to Boozer. Boozer hits the left side. He's out to the 45, up to the midfield stripe, down to the 45-yard line, goes to the 43 of the Raiders before Willie Brown can bring him down. Namath hands off to Snell. He breaks up the middle, down across the 30, to the 29-yard line, almost the 28-yard line. First down, New York. So from the 33. Here's a snap, the ball is down, the kick is on the way, and it is good! It is good! A 33-yard field goal by Jim Turner. At the end of the first quarter, the Jets led 10 to nothing, but not for long, as Daryl LaMonica took the Raiders from their own 13 and hit Fred Bolitnikoff with a 29-yard scoring play to cap the march. The point was good, and now it was Jets 10, Oakland 7. Later in that period, the Jets took the ball on their own 33. And after gaining a first down, it was... Namath back to pass, gets hit as he lets that ball go. It's caught by Sauer on the 34-yard line. He's out of bounds on the 33. A few plays later, it was again Jim Turner's turn. Here's the snap. The ball is down. The kick is on the way. And it is good. It just barely made it. A 34-yard field goal. And the Jets now lead 13-7 with 3 minutes and 35 seconds left to play in the first half. But with time running out of the second quarter, Oakland came back with a field goal of its own, a 26-yarder by George Blanda. And so after an action-packed first half, it was the Jets 13, Oakland 10. The second half saw both teams playing no-holes-barred football. The Jets got nowhere after the opening kickoff, and they punted. Here's the snap. The kick is away. Curley tries not to get it too high. It's taken by Bird on his own 42, and he fumbles the ball. It's it, it is recovered in midair by New York on the 40. And the man who caught the ball was Blake Turner. But again, the Jets were stymied. And after the Jets stopped Oakland's next drive at the Jet 4, Flanda booted home a nine-yard field goal. It was all tied up, and frightening thoughts of the Heidi game came back to haunt the Jet fans.
The Jets now took the ball of their own 20. A must series. Let's pick up some of the key plays. Third down 11 for New York. Namath calling signals. Namath drops back to pass. And Birdwell after him. Namath throws to Boozer. He's got it on the 25. And he is out of bounds right there. Snell and Boozer in the backfield as the setbacks. Slot to the right. Sauer in the slot. Maynard wide. And the handoff goes to Matt Snell. Snell belts his way into the left side. Goes for about 10 as Roger Bird from the secondary pulls him down. A big, big third down play for New York. Here's a handoff to Snell. Snell blasts his way for the first down, getting six yards. Namath fakes, throws, slant into Sauer. Jumping catch on the 41-yard line of Oakland, and down he goes. And Willie Brown making the tackle. Namath fakes the handoff, drops back to pass. He throws for Maynard. Great catch on the 21 by Don Maynard. Down and in, and Atkinson pulls him down on the 21-yard line of the Raiders. Third and 10 for New York on the Oakland 21. Fake handoff to Mathis. Namath in trouble, throwing. Caught by Lannans on the 10 to 5. Touchdown! Namath hit very hard as he threw the ball, but Lamons caught it. And it's a touchdown for New York. Well, the Jets are out in front now, 19 to 13. As New York has marched 80 yards for the touchdown. Well, they snap the ball down, the kick in the air, and it's good. So, with 58 seconds to go in the third period, the score now reads the New York Jets, 20, the Oakland Raiders, 13. At the opening of the crucial fourth quarter, the Raiders had the ball of their own three. It's third down. LaMonica back to pass. LaMonica throwing it is incomplete. Intended for Belitnikov on the 45, broken up by Al Atkinson. And the Raiders will have to give up the football on a fourth down and five yards to go on the Raider 35-yard line. The Jets were held at their 36 and forced to punt. Six plays later, George Blanda's field goal made it Jets 20, Oakland 16. And on the Jets' first play from scrimmage after the kickoff, Namath back to pass on a first down. Namath throwing for Don Maynard. It is intercepted by Atkinson at the 30, down to the 25, the 20. He's down to the 10, the 5, and he is knocked out of bounds. Here is LaMonica handing to Banizak. Banizak to the 1, to the goal line. Touchdown. Banizak goes in. And with Shea Stadium in a panic, the Jets were down now. Down for the first time, 23 to 20. But the Jets weren't panicked. They roared right back. First and 10, New York 32. Jets trail 23 to 20. Namath calls a play, drops back to pass. He looks, he throws for the sideline to Sauer at the 40. Sauer is knocked out of bounds on the 41 by Willie Brown. Namath dropping back to pass. He is looking, he is going to throw along for Don Maynard. And Maynard makes the catch down on the 10 and he is dumped out of bounds on the 8-yard line. A great over-the-shoulder catch, Don Maynard against George Atkinson. It is first and goal to goal. And the ball is now spotted on the 6-yard line. Here's a fake handoff to Matt Snell. Namath looking for the end zone, throwing, touchdown to Maynard. Joe Namath throwing to Don Maynard. He was not the, un he was not the intended original receiver. Namath was looking to his left toward George Sauer, and you've got to give the offensive line credit for that one, Merle, because he had all the time in the world. If he didn't have that good pass protection, he would have never had time to change, look completely across the field to Don Maynard, see him open in the end zone and throw for a touchdown. Another fine pass by Namath, great pass protection, a good catch by Maynard. A tremendously quick comeback. Here's Jim Turner's extra point, and it's good. Seven minutes, 47 seconds left to play now. And the defense put it on ice. Almost 63,000 fans standing as Oakland is going to go for it. Fourth and 10 on the 26. LaMonica calling the play, goes back to pass. He looks. He is hit by Biggs and brought down to the 34. Biggs got him blindside. Listen to this crowd. The Jets' defense takes away the football from the Raiders. It's marked on the 32. Biggs got LaMonica blindside. Darrell never saw him coming. 2.20 to play, first and 10 of the New York 13. LaMonica back to pass, looking, throwing a swing pass behind. He threw the ball behind Charlie Smith. It's covered by the Jets, picking up the ball. It is Ralph Baker running downfield. That was a lateral pass. It was not a forward pass. That pass was thrown behind the receiver. 
Charlie Smith out in the right flat. Ralph Baker picked it up. And, but wait a minute. Wait a minute. The ball is brought back to the 29-yard line. It is brought back to the 29 where a... Here comes the ruling. The ball could not be advanced at the 29. So the Jets take the ball. Two minutes left to play. Jets lead 27 to 23. Each team had the ball one more time, and then the crowd took over. Four seconds, three seconds, two seconds, one second. And there it is. The Jets have won the American Football League Championship, beating the defending champion Oakland Raiders 27 to 23. And Bedlam breaks loose at Chase Stadium. Jets have just beaten the Oakland Raiders for the championship of the American Football League. It was a big day for the Jets, a big day for Ralph Baker. You had a key fumble, which of course you picked up and ran in for a touchdown, only to be called back. However, it was still an important play for the Jets, wasn't it? Right, Sam. Actually, uh, they had first down and 10 yards ago on the 13-yard line. They were only four points behind, and if they would have gone in to score, they would they would have gone ahead and he threw that little swing pass out there and it was a lateral and I picked it up and I started running and I thought I had a touchdown but as it was we just got the ball and that was important at that point. Thank you Ralph. Winston Hill, the Jets have just won the championship of the American Football League. They beat the Oakland Raiders decisively. Today it was a great victory for the Jets and a great day for Winston Hill. I did not see Ben Davidson in that backfield one time. No, it was a great game. He didn't get in the backfield one time. Actually, for an offensive lineman, it's an individual battle. You don't really think of a team. You think of a man, don't you? Yes. You can't concern yourself with anybody's position but yourselves. The fullback's job is to run through the hole if he gets to block and if uh, the circumstances presents itself so that he's able to run. But my job is to provide a way for him to run, and nobody's dependent on doing this but me. Are the Jets going to win that Super Bowl? Yes, we are. Thank you, Winston Hill. Thank you. Now it was the big one, the Super Bowl, and the hard-nosed, hard-fighting Colts. And as far as the experts were concerned, it wasn't a question of who would win, but how quickly the Colts would stampede the Jets. How badly Baltimore's aggressive defense would maul Joe Namath, especially since he'd been brazen enough to guarantee a Jets victory and how badly moral Mackie, Maddie and company would chew up yardage and the Jets' defense. That's how the experts wrote the script. Unfortunately for the experts, the Jets never got around to reading it. As was true all year, they were too busy playing football and playing it mighty well. More than 75,000 were on hand to see the Jets take the opening kickoff at the Orange Bowl in Miami. From their own 23, they moved the ball 20 yards in six plays before being forced to punt. The minute the Colts got the ball, the experts were smiling and nodding their heads. Morrill passed to Mackey, who ran like a wounded rhinoceros for a gain of 19. Tom Maddy then bolted around right in for another 10. And Jerry Hill went to the left side for 7. But the Jets dug in. A Baltimore field goal attempt misfired, and the Jets had held. But the tables really started to turn early in the second quarter, when after picking off a jet fumble on the jet 12 and moving it to the six, it was no score, second quarter. Six yards to go for a touchdown, four yards to go for a first down. The Colts with a slot left. Maddie, the lone running back. Back to pass, Morrill. Morrill looks into the end zone, throws to Mitchell, and it is intercepted in the end zone off Mitchell's hand by Randy Beverly. Tom Mitchell got hit right in the bread basket on a pass for Morrill. He was wide open. The ball bounced up into the air, and Randy Beverly made a diving interception. And now the Jets were on the move. They took it to the Baltimore 48, where, listen. It is third down and four. Namath back to pass again in the pocket, throwing, and it's caught on the 34-yard line by George Sauer, leaping catch on the Baltimore 34. He is brought down immediately by Lenny Lyles. And it's another first down for the New York Jets, who are now on the Baltimore 34-yard line after taking over on their own 20. Namath backpedaling, looks, throws to the sideline, caught by Sauer at the 30, down to the 25, and knocked out of bounds on the 23-yard line. Namath back to pass, swings one out to Snell at the 20, Snell at the 15, Snell at the 10, Snell at the 9, fumbles, and the Jets have the football in the 9, recovered by Snell. First and goal to go on the 9-yard line for New York. Namath calls a play, Namath to Snell, Snell at the 5, Snell at the 4. 
Matt Snell behind the blocking of Dave Herman. Down to the four-yard line, and Rick Volk from the secondary to make the tackle. It is second down and goal to go in New York. Namath on a handoff to Matt Snell. Snell at the five. Snell at the three. Snell, touchdown! Matt Snell in the end zone, and a wide sweep to the left. He shook Rick Volk in the five-yard line and banged into the end zone where Lenny Lyles hit him. And this crowd is up and standing and yelling as the Jets have drawn first blood. Bob Talamini made an outstanding block to help Snell get into the end zone. And the Jets lead six to nothing. Really to hold, Jim Turner to kick. Here's the snap, the ball is down, the kick on the way, right up the middle. And the Jets now lead by a score of 7-0 with 9.03 to play in the first half. And now the experts were a little surprised. But now Baltimore had the ball again. But not for long. Moral backpedaling, throwing in a hurry, he's got Mackey open, he drops the ball as he caught it, and it's incomplete. He was hit by Johnny Sappo, the ball was dropped, it is incomplete. Johnny Sappo really popped Mackey as he got his hands on that football, and Mackey was open. The Jets now move the ball to the Colt 34, where Jim Turner missed a 41-yard field goal attempt. And then it was back to defense, as Morrill again brought the Colts within striking distance. To the Jet 15, a key play coming up. It'll be second and eight. Earl Morrill backpedaling to throw. Morrill looking. Morrill throwing for the end zone. It is intercepted by Johnny Sappo on the one-yard line. The Jets intercept Willie Richardson, the intended receiver, and Sappo intercepts on the one. They put the ball on the two, and that's where the Jets will take over. Now the Colts go razzle-dazzle with the old flea flicker. Calling the play, Earl Morrill, a handoff to Matty. He has the pa pass run option. He throws back to Morrill. Morrill throwing long up the middle of the hill. It's intercepted by Hudson on the 13. He's up to the 20, and he falls down, covers the ball. The half ended with the Jets out in front, 7 and other. No one believed it. But then the experts figured the second half would be a lot different, but it didn't look too different the way it started. On the first play from scrimmage, Willie Richardson in the slot left with Jimmy Orr wide. The running backs are split, Maddie and Hill, and a handoff goes to Maddie. Maddie comes back up the middle and fumbles the ball, and Baker falls out on the 32-yard line. Ralph Baker at the 33 recovers the fumble. Berlin Biggs really popped Tom Maddie. Ooh, did he hit him. And the ball was jarred loose, and there was Ralph Baker to fall out of the Jets start off the third quarter with a break, which they made. The Jets then took it to the Baltimore 25, where it was 4th and 24. So, Hurley holding at the 32, slide angle to the left. Jets lead 7 to nothing. Waiting the snap. Here's the snap, the ball is down, the kick is on the way, and it is good. Jim Turner with a 32-yard field goal. And with 10 minutes, 8 seconds left to play in the third quarter, the score, the New York Jets 10, and the Baltimore Colts nothing. The stout Jet defense held again, and the offense took over on its own 32. Namath back to pass, Joe looking, throwing, and it's completed on the 47-yard line to Sowery, is brought down immediately. George Sowery at the 47, brought down by Rick Holt, the safety man of Baltimore. Winston Hill doing a great job of pass blocking. He has given Ordell Bracey fits today. Big third down play for New York for possession. Over the ball is John Schmidt. Namath calling signals. Namath goes back to pass. He throws over the middle of Lamb and slant and he's got the ball on the 40-yard line of Baltimore and he bounces off the tack for Logan. Goes down to the 39, down to the 38-yard line. Namath back to pass on third down. Throwing up the middle of Snell. A leaping touch on the 25. He is brought down on the 24 by Mike Curtis, the left side linebacker. And it's another first down for the New York Jets on the Baltimore 24-yard line. On the next play, Perilli came in for Namath, who had injured his thumb. Two plays later, it was... Okay, here we go. The snap, the ball is down, the kick is on the way, and it is good! A 31-yard field goal by Jim Turner. And now, with 3.58 to play in the third quarter, the score, the New York Jets 13, and the Baltimore Colts, nothing. Again, the Jets held, and as the third quarter ended, the man of the hour, Joe Namath, was back in there moving his team. Third down and seven, New York. Rick slant into Sauer at midfield. He drops the ball. It is a dead ball on the 49-yard line. The Jets will retain possession. Namath back to pass. He looks. He throws long for Sauer. Sauer out there. Got it for 15. Walked out of the nine. George Sauer at the nine-yard line. Pulled down by Lenny Lyles. With fourth 
fourth and goal on the Baltimore two. Jim Turner went for his third three-pointer of the afternoon. Field goal unit in for New York. Pirelli calling the signals. Waiting for the snap. Here it is. The ball is down. The kick is up. And it goes right straight through the upright. Three more points for Jim Turner. And so with 13 minutes and 26 seconds left to play in this ball game, the Jets now lead the Baltimore Colts by a score of 16 to nothing. Then the Colts brought forth the great Johnny Unitas, sidelined most of the year with arm trouble. But that arm was still a threat. There was still magic there. And Unitas moved the Colts from the Baltimore 27 to the Jet 25. Another big play. Unitas goes back to pass. He's in the pocket. Unitas throwing for the end zone. It is intercepted in the end zone by Randy Beverly. He downs the ball. Randy Beverly intercepting on Jimmy Orr. But with 6.34 left in the game, some of the magic came back as Unitas masterminded a brilliant 80-yard march that saw Jerry Hill put Baltimore on the scoreboard from a yard out. And now with 3.41 left and down 16-7. The Baltimore kickoff was an onside kick, and the Colts recovered the ball. Now Baltimore is on the New York 19, and it's... Unitas back to throw. Unitas looking. Unitas throwing slanted and incomplete. Intended for Willie Richardson. He was covered by Johnny Sapple, who knocked the ball away. Two and a half minutes to play in this game. The Jets 16 and the Colts 7. Wide to the left is Jimmy Orr. Wide to the right, Willie Richardson. Johnny Unitas calling the play. Unitas backpedals to throw. Unitas throws as he has hit. It's incomplete. He threw the ball into the ground as Paul Rochester came in very hard from the left side. And also Jerry Philbin and Johnny U was dumped and dumped hard at the 25. Fourth down and four for Baltimore at the 19 of New York. Unitas back to pass. The rush is on. Johnny U throws. It is tipped and knocked away by Larry Grantham. Intended for Jimmy Orr. And the Jets take over. Two minutes and 21 seconds left to play in this ball game as Larry Grantham takes off the helmet, throws it high into the air. Namath then put on a beautiful two-minute, 13-second display of ball control before the Colts took over on their own 34. And with pandemonium breaking loose, it was... Unitas back to pass, two seconds, one second. Unitas throwing to Richardson. He has the ball in the 49, brought down by Sample. The clock has run out, and the ball game is over. There is the gun, and the Jets are champions of the football world. This is Sam DeLuca talking to Mr. Phil Islin the owner of the New York Jets. Mr. Islin, this must be a gratifying moment for you, and the entire season that the Jets have had must also be a gratifying moment. What are your reactions to the past season? Well, Sam, as you know, I'm one of the owners of the New York Jets. There is Mr. Leon Hess, Mr. Townsend B. Martin, and Mrs. Helen Springborn, who are also equal owners of the New York team. We're all thrilled. We think this, this was one of the great performances and one of the great teams uh, to come to New York. Thank you, Mr. Islin. Matt Snow, you had a great day today. I had to get you out of that locker room. There was madness inside. Here in the Orange Bowl at the Super Bowl, where the Jets have just beaten the Baltimore Colts, your first reaction to that game. Well, Sam, I, all I can say is that I'm simply elated. Uh, as, as you know, uh, we've pointed to this game for years, and, uh, and after five years, we finally got here and to go out today and have the game that I did have. I, I'm just elated. That's all I can say. You know, we all heard a great deal about Joe Namath's statements prior to the game. Did you make any? Well, the only statement that I made, Sam, was that, uh, that I thought we could run on the team. I didn't make it public publicly, but uh, uh, Booz and myself, we were roommates, and we knew that we could run on We knew that if we got a running game going, that Joe would be able to pick him apart with the passes. Matt, did you think that you would be able to run as effectively against that cold defensive line. Well, Sam, I'm like you. I've been in the game, and I don't believe anyone's super. Uh, I just think that we all play professional football, and uh, I think on any given day, any given team can run on another team, and today was just our day. Jerry Philbin, the Jets have just won the championship of the world. Your initial reaction to the game? Well, Sam, <laughs> the biggest thing was that uh, the elation. The, uh, it, was, it was too great to come by. As far as I'm concerned, it was the biggest victory I've ever been on. I never thought that I'd be on two championships in one year and so close together, but it's not the monetary thing. I think the biggest thing that came to mind was the AFL, the identity, it, it, uh, being proud of being playing in the American Football League and being part of the New York Jets. Jerry, was it you who made the statement there are four or five teams in the American Football League that are as good as the Baltimore Colts? Well, I, 
I've been saying it. I, I think there are four or five that are just as good as the Baltimore Colts. I, I, I think that we played some tougher games, and the tougher games being that uh, the two teams, that, three teams that beat us this year, Denver, Buffalo, and uh, Oakland. Thank you. Jerry Philbin. Coach Weep Eubank, this must be a great moment in your life, beating the Baltimore Colts for the championship of the world. It's been a long time coming, hasn't it? Sam, this is one of the greatest moments of my life. Uh, here's a football team. It was mine 10 years ago, and I thought they were the greatest when we beat a great football team in New York in an overtime game, the New York Giants, which had a great football team. But a lot of those players are still on this team, and they're assailing this football team as one of the greatest uh, of all times. And for our football team to maintain their poise and go out and execute plays like they did today, it's a great revelation for me, and it is the happiest moments of my life in order to be able to do this. Coach, I played for you. I know how you think. And I know that you're not inclined to make any rash statements, but Joe Namath did make statements before the game. I'm sure that you felt the same way, even though you didn't come out and say it. You knew the Jets would win? We felt that way. As a matter of fact, I remember Pete Lamons uh, the second day when we were looking at uh, movies. He says, Coach, you better stop showing us this movies before we get overconfident. But really, uh, we all felt in our hearts we could win this ball game, and it was all right for us, that, uh, for the press to tell the world that uh, the Baltimore Colts were the greatest. But in all of our hearts, we all went onto that field feeling we are going to win the ball game. As a matter of fact, I told Milt Woodard, our president, before the ball game, I said, calm down, we're going to win this. Well, thank you very much, Coach Eubank. This is a great day for the New York Jets, a great day for the American Football League, and a great day for professional football. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my honor to open today's welcoming ceremonies for our conquering team, and it is a privilege on behalf of the greatest city in the world to pay tribute to the greatest football team in the world, the New York Jets. It is now my honor to present the medallion of the city of New York to Weeb Eubank, head coach of the New York Jets, January 22. Mr. Robert Anderson, the sports editor of the Daily News. On behalf of the New York Daily News, it gives me great pleasure to present this special citation to our outstanding World Champ Jets in recognition of their super year. <laughs> It was a fantastic year, the year of the Jet, the year the AFL first won the Super Bowl, the year the Jets wrote their own script and surprised the experts. A fantastic year, the year of the Jet, the Super Jets. <laughs>